Hello YouTube, this is Eric KJ4YZI with part 2 of programming the GT3 by Beofeng. I just made a video of a review for the Beofeng GT3 and a lot of people online are saying they can't program it or they don't know what software to use. I am using the same Chirp software that I use for my UV5R and the same USB cable that I also purchased when I purchased the UV5R last year. So I'm going to show you uh, where to get the, the files. I also put links in the description for the files that you need. You only need two files. I have them here on the desktop. I'll show you which ones you need and how easy it is. First you want to open up your web browser and you want to go to Google is the easiest way. Google. Okay. You want to type in Beofeng USB driver. First one that pops up is Radio City Incorporated here. Just click that. <clears throat> now, based on the operating system that you have, if you have Windows XP 2000 or 98, you want to download this file right here. If you have Windows Vista or Windows 7, which I have Windows 7, you want to download this one down here. Okay. The driver you want is the Prolific PL-2303. You can find that at several different websites. However, this is the easiest way I can find to show you where to download it. You may have bought the programming cable and it came with a micro CD. That CD has the files on it. Just look for the, the folder that says PL-2303 and you'll find it after you click on that folder for different operating systems such as XP or Windows 7. So once you download this first one, you're going to have a file that looks like this here. Okay, this right here is the prolific driver for the USB. So you want to double click this file. Wherever you downloaded that, it'll be in your folder. You want to go ahead and install this, click next, accept, next, and this is going to install the driver. Now it does say PL2303 Vista driver. That's okay for Windows 7. It's compatible for Vista or Windows 7. So let this install. It takes about a minute, depending on how your computer is. This is a netbook, so it's not really the fastest. Okay. Done. Complete. You click finish. Go ahead and plug in your USB programming cable. It's going to pop up in the bottom right down here and say installing device driver. Now it's searching first for the Windows Update Center or Windows Driver Center or Windows Update. You don't want to really download from the Windows Update. You click this arrow down here and it'll come up. You'll see this little thing moving here, installing device driver software. If you click that, it'll pop up and it's telling you searching Windows Update. I recommend clicking this right here. It says skip obtaining driver. Go ahead and click that and it's going to look for the driver that you just installed. Now it's installing the prolific that you downloaded. Done. Prolific USB to serial COM port. That's what you want. Now keep in mind the number here. Write this number down or save it. COM32. This is going to be different on your computer it's going to be different than mine. Mine so happens to be 32. Yours might be 4 or 5 or 10. Depends on how many ports you have. So remember the COM32 right here. Okay, once you have that on, your USB cable is still plugged in. Go ahead and install Chirp. Now this may look a little bit different on your computer based on your operating system. Go ahead and choose the install directory by default it's c colon slash program files slash chirp that's where i choose to install it click install when this is done you click close now chirp's done you should either have an icon on your desktop or you can click on start and find chirp here in this menu or you can find it in your all programs there it is chirp go ahead and click that 
Now it's going to open up Chirp. If you've used this program before, it's going to look the same. If you haven't, when you open it up, this is what it'll look like first. Now, if you click on radio, download from radio, this is where you connect the correct COM port. Mine already filled in COM32. Now yours, again, may be 4 or 5. It may already be filled in there. Mine is 32. Beofeng UV5R. I'm going to turn my radio on, connect my USB programming cable. It helps to be in VFO mode, but it'll work with memory mode as well. Okay, it's connected. Go ahead and press OK, and it's going to pop up and say this radio's driver is experimental. Go ahead and click Yes, and there it goes. It is downloading from the radio. This is Chirp with the UV5R settings, the UV5R programming cable connected to the GT3, so it does work. I already have this radio programmed, so it'll pull up all my programmed frequencies, tones, and offsets that I already have. This file that I loaded to this radio actually came from my UV5R. So I downloaded the file from the UV5R saved it on my computer and then uploaded it to the GT3. The only error I had was once you download it from the UV5R and upload it to the GT3 it's going to come up with a message at the end and say the firmware is different with the device you were trying to upload. So basically the firmware on the UV5R is different than the firmware on the GT3. So the only thing it's not going to do is change the menu settings that you have in the radio. It'll move these frequencies and the alpha tags that you have already, but it won't change the menu functions. Now, if you haven't had a, a Beofeng before, you can go ahead and go to File and click New, and you can start your new list here. Once you're done with it, you can. once you make the list, you'll have an option here to go to Upload to Radio, and then you can send it to the radio, or you can change what you download from the radio in this list and then you can go and upload it back to the radio. When you upload it'll pop up with the screen again. COM32 is already set. Click OK. It'll say this is experimental. Click Yes. And there it goes. Now it is sending it back to the radio. So Again, Chirp works. I haven't used this with the Beofeng software yet, but I'm imagining if Chirp works with a UV5R setting, the Beofeng software should work also. That's it with the programming. In this list here, you can click the first column and change the frequency that you want. You can set a name for it right here. You can choose which type of tone you want a tone or a tone squelch, digital tone coded squelch. Um, you can set the tone frequency here so for your area you can set the different PL tone or tone squelch or DTCS code. You can also change the duplex here for negative or positive duplex or the negative offset as they call it and this is your offset frequency. So for, U, for UHF, you'll see it's 5 megahertz here, positive for this frequency. Up here it would be negative 0.6 for the VHF, which is usually standard. Standard for VHF is negative or positive 0.6, and standard for UHF is negative or positive 5.0. You could also set the power setting here, and uh, then you can upload this to the radio, so it does work. And... Uh, that's pretty much how you program it with the UV5R settings on the Chirp software. This is Eric, KJ4YZI, and we are QRT73.